Yeah, there, guys. So, uh, I've had a lucky few weeks where I've got to hang out with some of my favorite toy spinners on the East Coast, uh, including Christian, Lucas, and Baz, and uh, been able to trade off some ideas with them. So, uh, let's jump right on in, shall we? Um, Christian, aka Insignia, is loving this pattern right here, which is a stall switch between split time opposites and split time same direction, right? And he picked this up off of some YouTube videos of a poise spinner who goes by the handle Ross Axel. And Christian being Christian added his own flourish, which as you can probably imagine, I did. And I showed this pattern off to Baz, and um, Baz had the interesting idea of adding an additional stall that goes around the back side of the arm, like so. Which I thought was curative. And then to add my own flourish to this idea by adding a U stall to the mix. And that is what we call fun for the whole family. Um, also, being as how this pattern is essentially a split time version of um, this pattern, which is just alternating between same direction, same time, and opposite, same time. I've been working on getting the same pattern down except in horizontal planes, like so. has been an interesting trip. Um, yeah, so next up, um, I have been playing with the concept these past few weeks of this pattern, which I have been referring to as a spherical cat pattern. And I'm rapidly coming to the conclusion that um, the nomenclature for it is not actually accurate. Reason being, if uh, I was working off the concept of elliptical caps when I came up with that, and elliptical caps don't add up to ellipses, they add up to diamonds, right? They just happen to be composed of ellipses. Um, in other words, what I've been working on would probably be more accurately described as plane shifted caps rather than spherical caps. So then we get back to the question of does a spherical cap exist? And I believe it does. Because if we were to spring out of that pattern into an overlapping one, which was its neighbor, we could say we were adding up multiple spherical patterns. And all I'm doing here is when I stall into one of the U patterns, like that, I'm actually isolating my entire body around it. So I can just as easily go that way, for example. Um, yeah, so we also say there's another layer of complexity that will be a lot of fun to throw up. Next. Um, so I don't know if there's actually a name for this, um, or if there needs to be a name for it, but 
it's just something else fun, uh, something funky I was playing with the other day. Um, and it starts off with uh, doing isolations, thumbs towards the middle, right? And let's see here. As you turn with it, stop. Do a horizontal anti-spin with both stabs. Crank them around. One does anti-spin while the other one does uh, an isolation. Do an anti-spin flower, or at least half of one with them. Do an anti-spin again, and now you're back to having your thumbs pointing towards each other. Around. Anti-spin so they're pointed out. Up. Isolate and anti-spin. Anti-spin flower. Anti-spin horizontally so the thumbs are pointing towards each other. Just kind of adds up to what I think. It's kind of a funky pattern. Anyway, um, okay. And then the last thing, Lucas showed me a move that I totally don't remember supposed to go, just what we came up to use it with, which is uh, S-curves. And if you want to go a quarter beat with the S-curve, you can then plane bend out, come back in, finish the S-curve. Quarter, plane bend out, and in, finish the S-curve. Like so. Yeah, so that is this week in a nutshell, and uh, I'll be back in a couple weeks in a brand new apartment, uh -huh. and uh, hopefully have learned a whole ton of uh, awesome new tech. Oops, I'll show off to you guys. So, thank you guys for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll see you all post-play. Have a great couple weeks.